Welcome to highlights of day one of Henley Royal Regatta 2018. The preparations for this day have been going on for months, both off the course, the grass, the tents, the hospitality look in absolutely amazing shape. And on the course, there's been some stunning races, but for some crews, dodgy steering has definitely been a feature of day one. The opening round of the Four League Challenge Cup saw Neptune Rowing Club and Tideway Scullers School C getting a little too close for comfort. While the Wyfold Challenge Cup race between Lee Rowing Club and Aviron Grenobles had to be restarted after the crews clashed in neutral water. But it was another Wyfold Challenge Cup race that proved the most dramatic. Umpire Richard Phelps decided that the encounter between Stratford on Avon and Swan River Rowing Club would have to go to a re-row, and it certainly didn't disappoint. You see the on the right hand side of your screen the crimson, black and white of Stratford upon Avon Boat Club. Uh, looked like a small lead approaching the uh, signal marker there. You see in, in the background, but it's close. And I think this a lot of this race will be down in will be won or lost in the heads. Yeah, absolutely. Turning up only well, probably an hour and a half later to to do this race again, all 2,112 metres of the course is not an easy task. And, and certainly for Swan River Rowing Club, knowing that they've come so far, that they've won the first match-up and that that has all been taken away, certainly it's how you bounce back from that kind of a, that kind of a race. Now, Swan River had pulled out about a length lead. Now, I think it's less than that now. It's down about half length as they're coming past the regatta enclosure. And now it will really be hurting both crews now for the second occasion. So this is a lot of this is in the head now. Who wants it more? Who can keep their act together as a four, keep synchronised, keep that boat movement as efficient as possible? It's incredibly tough. We can see both crews just struggling with their blade work a little bit when they get into that bouncy water. You can see the pain on the faces. You can see how much that hurts. <laughs> that brings back bad memories. And they, it is stroke for stroke. Amazing race. Both crews going up again here, both driving up to the line as they come past the grandstand, past the enclosures. They're coming down to the line here, and it's just so ever so slight lead to Swan River Rowing Club by about a canvas. They've got 10 strokes left. It's anyone's race, this one. What a re-row, what a row to finish on before the lunch break. As they come down to the line, Stratford, Pont Avon, they're taking it up. They're giving everything, aren't they? And then coming to the line now, Wow, what a race to finish with. Next up, we head back to the Forley Challenge Cup for Junior Quadruple Skulls. This was an amazing race between Star and Arrow and St Paul's. This was nip and tuck all the way. Still very close all the way down the track here, but it looks like Star and Arrow perhaps just have the lead now over St Paul's wow. School Boat Club A, who were really leading it out very hard and fast out of the start but it does look like they've just moved up yeah, into very tight canvas lead here as they come past the stewards enclosure they've been able to raise the rate but it's still tight all the way to the line looks like they've found that extra gear looks like they've been able to lift their rate a little bit more in the star and arrow crew wow another incredibly tight race elated the boys from the star and arrow club they come across the line. We've had crews racing from all around the world here on Wednesday, but sometimes you can't beat a local derby. This is the Temple and it's Bristol versus Bath. I was looking earlier on the um, Bristol University website and apparently they're the premier rowing university in the southwest. Well, their, their neighbours 50 miles down the road might have something uh, to say about that today. Uh, two crews Top of the approaching the top of the island, pretty much side by side, and this is going to be a real grudge match. And now we're joining them further down the course, just going past the three-quarter mile uh, signal. Bristol still ahead. It's very tight, though. Only about a canvas in it. This is going to come all the way down to the wire here. And Bristol have had the harder route to the event because they've had to come to the qualifiers, which uh, Bath didn't. So they had to race on Friday just to uh, get in. And Bath University, they said that they were looking forward to a good race against Bristol 
who they've faced before and as such they're feeling confident and I wonder if that confidence is being shaken at this point because it is Bristol University on the left hand side who is just leading over Bath University Boat Club so I wonder if maybe they've got something in their pocket here Bath University. It's stroke for stroke at the moment sir isn't it both at 38 strokes a minute and I think that's, a, that's only going to go up now so the last minute and a half to go they're just into the enclosures now past a beam the regatta enclosure and there'll be more and more people shouting their support. They'll get noisier and noisier as they build towards the finish. This is one, certainly one of the tightest races we've seen today. They're a couple of hundred metres away from where we are. I can hear the crowd cheering. Now, it must be amazing to be in one of those boats now. I think Bath maybe have got their nose ahead. I don't know. We'll see. If we come right down to the finish. It is stroke for stroke at the moment. Wow, what a push there by Bath. That's huge. They must have known that they had that in their back pocket because they said they were confident coming into this race over Bristol, but certainly the earlier racing wouldn't have indicated that. They take it out by half a length. Bath University Boat Club in the Temple Challenge Cup over the University of Bristol. Great race. The crowds have been loving the warm weather here on Henley Wednesday. We thought at one moment the chairman, Steve Redgrave, was going to relax the jackets rules for gentlemen, but he held firm. We're going to look now to the Thames Challenge Cup, fast becoming a sort of world club challenge for the men's eight. This is London versus Chester. It's tight, isn't it? It is tight and it looks like... Still, the margin still looks like London are up and... Rochester is just coming a little bit over towards the station with no warning from the umpire. So this is a great race. These guys know they're in for a tough race. This is going to go all the way. It's resilience all the way down because Chester are still hanging on to them relentlessly. Yeah, Rochester who train up in the D up in Chester. They've had some great athletes over the years who come and go. And the club crews, it's hard for them to keep consistent performances, but this is a really good crew here competing well. Look at that. I think Chester are edging back. I think London have made their move, and I think they're just going to sit there, sit there now. And is, is that enough to win the race? They're still miles away. They are, the they, longer they, this goes on, the more likely Chester are to win this. London really have not killed them off here. I think that London have been caught up now by Royal Chester. The thing is, I mean, you know, so Abigail Lee, what do you say as the cox of this crew, as a London crew? Do you like, ask for an effort? Do you stay cool and think, right, we've got it in the tank, boys, done the training camp? They've made a move, eh? They've made a move. They have made a move. I think when you're in that position in the leading eight, you have got a bit of space to absorb this. And if you can be composed and let the other crew do their effort and see where it runs out and then make your move when they're feeling a bit more tired. But that this Chester crew is not going to roll over. So I wonder if this Chester crew has got another ditch attempt to try and get back on terms. It's a lot to ask as you come down the enclosures. 10, 15 strokes left. Yeah, now it's time to get three quarters of the length. You're going to have to do something spectacular now if you're going to win. So that's, a, that's a tough race on both crews. They've really dug in. They have. It's a great race. Really rowing. Club rowing at its best. Remembering these are two B crews, so there are A crews in this event as well. Fantastic competition from both of them. So London B take that heat of Thames Challenge Cup. You can see how exhausted they are. They were really asked questions all the way down by a really strong crew from Rochester Rowing Club. The last race we're going to have a look at today is in the y -fold. So this is Coxless Fours, St Neots versus Worcester. Now due to a late withdrawal from Marlow, St Neots were bumped up. So they are by any definition the slowest in the competition. This race had everything. Umpiring, steering, drama, the work. It's the Whitehall Challenge Cup. They were due to race Marlow Rowing Club, who withdrew. And in their place came the men from St. Neots Rowing Club, who were, oh, wow. Now, what's going to happen there? Because St. Neots basically got their steering all wrong. So St. Neots were the fastest qualifying crew. Opposition, red flag, they can't disqualify St. Neots because they've only just asked them to come and race yesterday afternoon. Back it down on the start. I mean, it was St. Neots' problem. How did you see that, Jess? Yeah, I think they just skewed across. As I was saying before, it's hard with little boys and they've got Cox's boat. Oh, that's a restart. Well, that's the right decision. So the guys from St. Neots on the right view picture, they, they raced in the qualifiers. They weren't fast enough to go into the event, but they got the call yesterday, just before the England match. You're in Henley. They must have been 
absolutely so delighted that they're going to race and they've got such a big deal the qualifiers for guys. is five days ago so yeah, yeah, they could yeah. have been doing anything they could have been doing anything, holiday by but, then you know I, I think you know th there was that incident at the start but you know good sense prevailed and the men from St Neots get to try and race again and the steersman in that boat I don't know whether it's uh, Mitchell Dwelly in the stroke seat or it's the bowman who's got the magic foot I don't know but uh they will have their day in the sun because I think they've led a race at Henley. At least they can say they're up, that. They're up a third of the length at the end of the island. I don't think they're going to stay up, though. These Worcester boys look like they're coming back a little bit now. Tim we'll see what the angle the, looks like. Tim Woodman in the stroke seat, you can see that. I mean, you can see the look on the face. He's throwing everything in. They know they've got to throw everything in down the course. We're probably about out in the badlands greg sill calls that the badlands which is you don't know the course comes away from the bank you're in the middle of the river you think where am i we're a lot quieter out there during the middle of the race the worcester look like they're pushing back now i would call it their bows are slightly ahead i actually think st needs is still ahead actually you probably got a canvas ahead you just got to hold your head be calm when you're the crew behind if you're confident you're going to sprint that line better than this crew next to you but I tell you what the Worcester boys look like they're sprinting already so if St Neots can keep calm and they've got some, some beans left I like the look of Alex Cairns a 23 year old he's very solid in the free seat anchoring that bow I mean if they're going to come through Worcester it'll be his poise and power that will take them through the look of agony on Tim Wilton's face wouldn't fill me with confidence if I was a Worcester sort of coach but maybe that's how he always looked but here you see their opposite opponents from St Neots Mitchell Dwelly in the stroke seat. Uh, I don't have his first name for you. Wish I did. FM, his initials. That's all he get in the Henley programme. But uh, he's had his head down. He's not looked up, and that's been the whole 2K call. So he, that's that'll be how he races, Jess. Yeah, these crews are very evenly matched on weight. There's only a couple of kilos in it. And they are coming back, edging back. They I really are. I think Worcester are going to take it. Who's got something left? Who's, got, who's going to hold their nerve here? Who's going to have a sprint to the line? It's that combination in the middle of boat, Will Fraser and Alex Cairns. We talked about him. It's not done and dusted yet. Where are they finding that energy from in the uh, in the St. Neots boat just to hang on? He's dug in again. Mitchell, uh, Dwelly, Eustecker, Williams and Shorten have found some energy from somewhere. And as they come into the last 45 strokes... Look across from the two man there. Get your head up. Have a look across. Let's go for this finish line. There he goes. Has he got some more? I can't believe. Are they going up again? Let me get that rating. That's uh he's been 36. This is bow ball to bow ball. I think St. Neats might have just stuck in a little push there. 39. He's gone up to 39. You can't really go anywhere here towards the end of the course. 150 meters to go. Who's gonna look at the look hold their hand face. in the fire? This is cracking. Tim Woodman, I cannot pick this race. The drone is flying with them. The cameras are going with them. I think the knee has broken them. They're going to yeah. put a canvas ahead. That is a sensational race. He put his race. head up this truck, man, and really finish it off. The finish line is there. It's the crew from Worcester sprinting. Some Neats are in the lead. They're in blue. You can pick the winners yourself. Will they come back? One of the closest races of the day. Oh! That is an absolutely cracking race. Thank you so much for putting that race on. They don't know the result. Sir Neat Strokeman, he still doesn't know if he made it back. I don't think he did. I think, uh, sorry, I think they did. He doesn't know the result. He doesn't know he's won. It's the Worcester crew. Probably might have more knowledge, but the Sir Neat Strokeman, he, he won't know because it's that close, isn't it? Look at that. What's that distance? Oh, A couple of feet? Yeah, if that. That's it for the day one highlights. Don't forget you can watch any or all of our races back on the YouTube channel. We'll be back tomorrow with more highlights and of course, more live racing. First race, 08.30. We'll see you then.